Goma, the largest town in eastern Congo. Economic and trade center, seat of government for the province of North Kivu, one million inhabitants, and with an international airport in the middle of town. In January 2002, the Niragongo volcano north of Goma erupted. Streams of lava flowed through the town so fast that many could not reach safety. This natural disaster claimed 147 lives. Large areas of Goma were destroyed. The lava also flowed over the airport, covering parts of the apron and the runway up to six meters high. Suddenly, of the original 3,000 meters of runway, only 1,850 meters could be used. A safety risk. If anything goes wrong, there's no room for maneuver. That's why in April 2008, a passenger jet overshot the runway, careering into the busy market area of Bireri. 47 dead, most of them market shoppers. Shortly after the crash, the wounds in the cityscape have healed. The debris has been removed. The dead are buried, the houses repaired. But everyone who lives here or comes to work or just to run errands knows perfectly well a disaster like this can reoccur at any time. And Dala Mazambi and his wife Josephine live just at the end of the runway. They make a living selling cooked meals to market shoppers. Everything is improvised. They cook in the passageway of their house and have a little garden above the market. Ndala Mazambe remembers the fatal day very well, how the jet careered over his house and then crashed down on the street, how they rushed there to help. To this day, every landing, every takeoff, reminds him that it could happen again. The family can't move away. The house is everything they own, a life in fear. April 22, 2009, seven years after the volcanic eruption, the groundbreaking ceremony marks the start of the rehabilitation of the airport. Excellent. 500 meters of the lava-covered runway are to be cleared and repaired, making it operational again for flights. The project is being financed by the Foreign Office of the German Federal Republic and the German aid organization Welthungerhilfe is carrying out the work. Welthungerhilfe has been active in Eastern Congo since 1997 and has a great deal of experience, especially in the rehabilitation of roads for long-distance traffic. Georg Dürken, country officer for Welthungerhilfe in the Democratic Republic of Congo, is inspecting the progress of the construction work. 500 meters of the damaged runway have to be cleared of lava, sometimes six meters high. A 200 meter safety zone at the end of the runway and 75 meters on both sides also have to be cleared, totaling nearly 100,000 square meters. With the airport in operation all the time, this should take three years. It also requires a lot of construction machinery. Among other things, three bulldozers and a wheel loader are being deployed, plus, four dump trucks to transport the blocks of lava away. The lava is extremely hard, therefore the wear on the equipment is high and spare parts are hard to come by. In spite of these difficulties, the work is making good progress, even though more lava than estimated has to be cleared. It will finally add up to 50,000 truckloads. The airport is Goma's lifeline. 
Without it, the town would be cut off from the markets in the west of the country. The roads for long-distance traffic, built in colonial times, are in bad condition and hardly passable. Mega cities like Kinshasa, Lumumbasi, and Katanga can only be reached by airplane. From there, trade goods come in and agricultural products are flown out from Goma. But the airport is also a transfer site for natural resources like this cassiterite. It arrives here coming from the mines out in the bush and is being transported abroad. Air freight traffic to and from Goma is a profitable and reliable business. Even more profitable if the aircraft from the 60s are loaded to the limit or even dangerously beyond. Danzia Alita is chief pilot for this freight airline that flies into Goma daily. Uh, it's not easy. We have to end uh, careful. In that time we end everything, we are really busy to land. And we try to make it all safely. But if we have the, ex uh, I mean the extension of the airport, uh, that will be very nice for us because the job will be more easy. We handle the plane easily, we can stop it even if it's raining. Yeah, but f so now when it's raining, for example, it's raining, we cannot land here with the, the, the same airplane at the same weight. It's going to help too much, even for the takeoff. Because we uh, increase weight for the takeoff, we increase the, you know, the, the value of the, the cargo. So the company is going to make more money <laughs> with that. In February 2011, work came to a grinding halt. Important paperwork and plans had not been provided. Country officer Georg Dürken is familiar with the background. The country is looking back on 12 years of war and civil war. Therefore, the conditions of work are extremely difficult, starting with the fact that retrieving any kind of documents is sheer horror. It's hard work. For example, we still don't know to which specifications we are supposed to build the runway. The paperwork we received was no help. This is why we employed Hans, who is going to do this work for us and our partner RVA, and I hope we'll make some progress here. The non-submitting, or rather submitting of bad paperwork, cost us 9 to 12 months. That means we could have finished the project much earlier, even before the planned deadline, and it would also have cost considerably less. That's unfortunate, but this is how it is. Nothing is easy or simple here. I have been assigned here by Weltunge Hilfe to assist and uh, to prepare a design and uh, tend the documents for this runway construction. Uh, so I guess this is a work that uh, RVA, they have made efforts to, to prepare such documents, but uh, the information I've received, it's uh, very thin. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, since this uh, volcano eruption uh, in 2002, uh, we have also noted that there, there are very little information, you know, updated information for um, uh, air traffic to understand that the runway is no longer 3,000 meters long. It's only 1,850 meters. Almost half of the runway is covered by lava, but there is no mention of that in the official handbook. It's a matter of survival for the pilots to know the local situation exactly, and there are more risks at Goma Airport that they have to take into account. In general, it's a problem that people just walk across the runway. You sit here and work and suddenly you see someone crossing the runway without being in contact with us here in the control tower. It could be an airplane in final approach and they don't see it. Then the plane might have to go around. It's a waste of fuel and potentially dangerous as well. 
We asked the military on the other side of the runway to improve the safety. We look after the air traffic, but someone else has to provide safety on the ground. You can see that there is a lot of military over there. They have to block the access so that nobody can cross the runway anymore. One of the many problems the airport director and his team have to solve while operating on a budget. Here in Goma, the Civil Aviation Authority is under-budgeted, while at the same time the government splashes out on prestigious buildings and a VIP terminal at the capital Kinshasa. Antiquated equipment, dilapidated buildings, the part of the runway which is not covered by lava is in bad condition too. During rainfall, the water doesn't drain off properly, forming puddles on the runway, yet another safety risk. It was raining on the 19th of November 2009 when this jet crashed in Goma. 145 extra meters of runway had already been cleared at the time. That certainly saved the passengers' lives. Otherwise, the plane would have crashed into the hardened lava. The governor of the province of North Kivu, Julian Poluki Kaungija, was also on board. He sees the project as a chance to bring peace to the region. This project is also helping the peace process by providing employment. Many young people are recruited by the rebels. They're offered five, ten, or a hundred dollars if they join them. But if the young people have their own income, then they no longer join the militias, preferring to work at the airport or as drivers instead of getting a bullet in the chest out in the bush. Bizima Yoweri works as a lorry driver at the airport project. One out of ten Congolese has a regular job. The average income per head and year is about 100 US dollars. This is why effects on local employment are always an important part of Veltunga Hilfe's infrastructure projects. There is little work for unskilled employees at the airport project. Lorry drivers, mechanics and operators are needed here. Things are different with road rehabilitation projects, where a great number of local workers are employed on a cash-for-work basis. They are also regularly swapped in order to give an income to as many as possible. Bizima Yoweri walks to work and back every day, 90 minutes per trip. He prefers to save the allowance his employer gives him for the bus. For his job at the airport, he gets 150 US dollars each week. Repairing things for neighbors after hours earns him a little extra cash. Enough for him and his family to live comfortably and to pay for the children's school fees. Women like Sinun Bajo also benefit from the project at this stage of work. All around the construction site, they collect the lava stones, sort them according to size, and sell them to construction companies who collect the material in trucks. This means work and income, also for people who are not directly employed at the airport project. It is usually mothers and daughters who work on the fields of rubble in the full sun. They make 13 to 15 dollars for a truckload of sorted lava stones. That's about six cubic meters, and they need roughly two weeks to collect this amount. A tough job, but one of the few possibilities for the women here in Goma to earn cash. Sinun Bajo has seven daughters. Five still live with her, but none of them go to school. Most families are in a dire financial situation, making child labor a reality in Congo. Mm. 
With the money she earns from selling the lava, she can buy food that the family would not otherwise be able to afford, like potatoes or cabbage, for example. She only spends her wages on food, says Sinun Bajo. She could send her daughters to school with the money, but that's not possible because they have to help her with the work on the rubble fields. Eliki Bujero never went to school either. For four years, he has been working as a chukudu transporter. Chukudu is what these two-wheeled wooden vehicles are called. They are used only in the region of Goma. The roller bearings are usually taken from junked cars. A chukudu can transport a load of up to 200 kilograms. The chukudu rolls downhill by itself. On flat ground or uphill, the rider has to push. It's a tough job, but very much sought after. With a bit of luck, 10 to 15 US dollars per day can be earned. A lot of money in the Congo. Today, he's on the move on behalf of Welthunger Hilfe. He has to deliver beverages and a goat to the compound at the airport. In the evening, there will be a little celebration. It's a location he would rather avoid, as it brings bad memories to the surface. Eliki Bujero barely survived the jet crash of April 2008. He remembers well what happened that day. He was near the market with many of his colleagues, waiting for work, like every day. All of a sudden, the airplane careered over the rooftops, crashed into the market, and went up in flames. Many of his friends were buried under the wreck and died. Eliki Bujero was lucky to survive, but the memories of that fatal day won't leave him even after all these years. By autumn 2012, the lava had been completely removed, a good reason to celebrate. But the last stage of the project remained unfinished. Due to delays because of the lack of paperwork, the cleared runway had not yet been asphalted, and it wouldn't happen before the official end of the project in December 2012. The deadline would have to be extended. And yet again, something got in the way. In November 2012, the M23 militia chased away the regular army and for a few days seized the city and the airport of Goma. In the chaos during their invasion and fallback, Welthungerhilfe's compound at the airport was looted. Georg Dürken assessed the damage. The location was hardly recognizable anymore. In here, we had spare parts for about a million euros. They're all gone. Georg Durkin has witnessed a lot of destruction and looting during his time as country officer in the Congo, but nothing as bad as this. That was our workstation, our lager, our bureaus. 
This used to be our workshop, our storage, our offices. It's all been looted when the rebels attacked Goma. Everything is gone. Computers, the corrugated iron sheets, spare parts, a loss of about a million euros. They even took the plugs and wiring. Sometimes it's very unpleasant to work here. Not only is it a dangerous environment to work in, but there's also the volcano, which is a risk. There's a methane bubble up in Lake Kivu, which can blow up. There are rebels. Sometimes I wish I worked in a more peaceful country in order not to face the risks that I've been exposed to for more than 20 years. It's not always easy here. The conflict between the government and militia, like the M23, is carried out at the expense of the rural population. They try to escape from war, murder, and rape, fleeing to Goma, where they are safer because of the presence of UN troops. 15,000 people live here in the refugee camp Muganga 3. It's only one of the 19 camps around Goma. Nianzira Furaha lived in the village of Mueso in the Masisi region, about 60 kilometers north of Goma, and under control of the militia. She and her six children fled to Goma. The war is between the FARDC of Raya Mutumboki and other armed groups like the M23 and the FARDC, says Nianzira Furaha. We fled from the war because they killed. They raped the women and stole our belongings. We have been living in Camp Muganga for three years now, and we have no hope to ever go back home because the war goes on and on and because there are so many armed groups in the bush. At night, the crater of Niragongo volcano glows over the town. Georg Dürken has gone out to meet volcanologist Dario Tedesco, who has been researching the volcano for 15 years. Georg Dürken wants to find out how dangerous the volcano could be for the airport, and whether the lava could be prevented from flowing over the airport again. They arrange another meeting on site. The eruption of 2002 followed the one in 1977. It started at the flank of the volcano. There was a small fissure already in 1977 and a much bigger one in 2002 that stretched almost to the outskirts of Goma. There were two streams of lava that destroyed parts of the town. For the future, our study suggests that such a fissure might occur in the middle of town, in the middle of town. Yes, in the middle of town or in the lake. There are craters too there. Therefore, without any doubt, the next eruption will be much more destructive. Firstly, because the eruption will be in the town itself, and also because there aren't 400,000 inhabitants anymore, but a million. a hill north of Goma, at the foot of Niragongo volcano. Nobody is allowed to come here without permission from the local king, the Muami. The drums are heralding his arrival. According to popular belief, the Nuwami has supernatural powers. He talks to nature and the animals, and resolves the mundane problems in his area of influence, the chefferie. He will hold an audience here. For centuries, the Muami and his ancestors have ruled over this country, but today the power comes out of the barrels of Kalashnikovs. Only a few kilometers further north, the rebel territory begins, and so the volcano becomes the Muami's ally in his fight with those who challenge his power.
The volcanologists misconceive the truth about the volcano, which, in our tradition, has supernatural powers. The volcano erupts if the Wami is incensed about wrongful politicians. At the last eruption, the ancestors were angry that the potentates of Goma wanted to extend their influence until here. The Wuami can stop an eruption if he is not challenged. August 2014, the airport project is approaching its completion. After lengthy preparations and some difficulties to find a contractor for the work, the 500 meters of cleared runway get an asphalt surface and are ready to be used. On February 20th, 2015, six years after the beginning of the work, the project is officially handed over to the Congolese government and the Civil Aviation Authority. The project cost more than 13 million euros, a first step of the rehabilitation of Goma Airport and a trigger for further measures. The government will have the rest of the runway asphalted and the World Bank is financing a further extension of the runway plus a runway lighting compliant with international standards. As representative of the donor, Foreign Minister Frank-Walter Steinmeier will inaugurate the extension of the runway. Of course, we've observed the development of this conflict in eastern Congo for many years. The people of Germany were appalled by the dimension of the violence, by the lack of opportunities that people have to live with. And therefore, we decided many years ago to help initiate economic development and to use this development to calm down the existing conflicts between the ethnic groups and also those who come from neighboring countries. I'm happy that this location, this runway, has become a place of hope, hope for the end of violence, for daily life returning to normal. And I would be pleased if we in Germany had contributed to that. Enhanced safety, a connection to international air transport, economical development, the people of Goma can benefit from all of this if the intention for peace and normality will prevail.